بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today I want to share with you a story of Zakaria عليه السلام and an aspect about his story The story of Zakaria عليه السلام is a very interesting story in the Quran fascinating, amazing and a lot of it has to do with his dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's something that like actually shines and stands out from the story of Zakaria alayhi salam and his dua with Allah azza wa jal. And we learn a lot in terms of how our dua is supposed to be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we introduce our dua when we're calling onto Allah azza wa jal? What words do we use? And most importantly, what kind of attitude are we supposed to have when making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And of course, we all know that a dua is very, very important. The more you make dua in your life, then that is a sign that you are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your faith is high. And the further away you move from a dua, then also that means that your relationship with Allah is very far away. A dua is a measure in terms of how close and how far you are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very important when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, الدعاء هو العبادة. عبادة is all about dua. Worship is all dua. Okay, and of course the dua is many types and so on. But let's uh, get into this story. Allah azza wa jal, he mentions at the beginning of Surah Maryam, ذكر رحمة ربك عبده زكريا إذ نادى ربه نداء خفيا. Allah azza wa jal speaks about Zakariya alayhi salam. And he says to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he says to us all, إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ نِدَاءً خَفِيَّةً Remember, when Zakaria alayhi salam called unto his Lord a silent call, Nida خَفِيَّةً He called unto Allah a silent dua. So that means when Zakaria alayhi salam made dua to Allah azza wa jal, in this moment of his life, we're going to see what it is, he wasn't loud in his dua, so he couldn't even hear his own self. He made a silent dua. Well, ulama, rahimahumullah, the scholars of Islam, they discuss which dua is better. A dua in which you are allowed and you can hear your own self, or a dua that is silent in which you cannot even hear your own self. The reality is that the dua you make that is absolutely silent in which only your tongue is moving is much better than making a dua that is allowed. Why is that? Because the one who makes a silent dua, his faith and certainty that Allah hears him is a lot more than the one who makes dua raising his voice. Because the one who's making a silent dua, he can't hear himself, but he's absolutely certain Allah Azza wa Jal hears him. So it gives a lot more strength in your certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as-sami' al-mujib, the one who hears and the one who responds. So that's the first thing we're learning. Allah azza wa jal is praising the fact that Zakaria alayhi salam made a silent dua. See, this here wasn't mentioned just as a fact. Allah azza wa jal mentioned this praising Zakaria, praising him alayhi salam saying that, look at this quality. He made dua to Allah while being silent, khafiyya. What did he say? He began his dua and said, قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَهَنَ الْعَظْمُ مِنِّي He said, my Lord, my bones have become weak and frail. Al-wahan is for something strong to become weak. So he's saying, my Lord, I had bones that were strong. And now because... I'm in old age, at this time he's 70, 80 years old, Allahu Alam, he was old. His bones have become very weak and frail. And he's saying this in his dua, And the hair of my head has become gray, it's become white. It's, it's on fire. Is to, is to burn something. You know, a coal, when you have a coal, it's black. So then when you burn it, it becomes... Uh, red hot and then when it turns off it becomes white and grey 
That's what he's, that's what he's saying. He's saying, Lord, I have become old. And notice, he did not say that my heart has become weak. He's saying my bones are weak, my hair is white. And that is because the believer's heart never becomes weak. The believer's heart is always strong. And the more he lives, the stronger and stronger his relationship with Allah gets. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it is for Zakaria alayhi salam. وَهَنَ الْعَظْمُ مِنِّي وَاشْتَعَلَ الرَّأْسُ شَيْبًا Now he said something very, very important. And this teaches us how our attitude when making dua to Allah should be. He said, وَلَمْ أَكُمْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّ شَقِيًّا He said, my Lord, I have never, ever, ever been miserable when making dua to you. I have never been hopeless. I have never given up when making dua to you. Allahu Akbar. Can you imagine this? Zakaria alayhi salam is old now and his dua is coming. He actually wants a child. And he's been making this dua for so long and he has never given up. That's the attitude we're supposed to have. You know, Umar radiallahu anhu, he used to say, Ana la ahmilu hammad al-ijabah, walakin ahmilu hammad dua. He said, I am never ever concerned about the result of the dua. I do not care how it's answered. That's to Allah Azza wa Jal. That's not my knowledge. I got nothing to do with that. But my greatest concern is to continue making dua. That's my concern. My concern is not how it's answered. That's not in my hands. That's for Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah answers according to his wisdom and his knowledge. But what I'm greatly concerned about is actually making this dua and continue to make dua and never give up. And so Zakaria alayhi salam, he's saying to Allah in his dua, Lord, I have never given up when making dua. I have never been hopeless. You know, there are people, unfortunately, something bothering them in life. They want a change to their situation. They come to a sheikh, they come to someone learned and they say, Wallahi, I've been making dua for so long. And, 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 and the way they're saying it's like they've given up and you know, nothing's changed. I've made dua for so long and Allah has not changed anything. Well, the problem is you've given up. That's where your problem is. The solution for such people, go back and make dua and continue making dua and don't await any result. And making dua is a worship to Allah. You are rewarded. It's not like it's going to waste. There's no such thing, oh Allah, I wasted, I wasted two years of my life asking Allah Azza wa Jal and then at the end I didn't get anything. Every moment you sit there and say, my Lord, you're being rewarded and your faith is increasing because you're calling onto Allah Azza wa Jal. That's what Allah wants. Perhaps Allah Azza wa Jal delays and doesn't give you what you want so that he can keep hearing your begging and your cries to him. And that's good for you. It will work out good for you. More reward for you on the day of judgment. So, And notice how he started his dua. He explained his situation and his weakness. That's him humbling himself before Allah. Saying, my Lord, I am weak. I am fragile. My bones are weak. My hair is gone white. My Lord, I am poor. I'm in desperate need of you. Begin your dua like this. It's good. It softens the heart. It puts you in that position of humility and humbleness, making your dua more and more of a chance to be accepted. And by the way, that is called at-tamalluqu fi dua Perhaps this is the first time you ever hear of this word. At-tamalluqu fi dua And this is from the etiquette and the manners of a dua At-tamalluq meaning to use gentle words. To use soft words when addressing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, there's a difference between saying, my Lord, forgive me. And between saying, Lord, I have wronged myself. And I am ashamed of myself. And if you don't bestow your mercy and your favors and your blessing and your forgiveness upon me, I will be from among the losers. There's a difference between wording it this way and just saying, Allah, forgive me. That's at-tamalluqu fi dua Allah Azza wa Jal loves that. And that introduction prepares the heart to be in that state of humility and humbleness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
He then says, وَإِنِّي خِفْتُ الْمَوَالِيَ مِنْ وَرَائِي This is all in his dua. He says, my Lord, I fear for the generation after me, for the successors and the children after me. Who's going to lead them? Who's going to teach them the religion? Who's going to teach them the scripture and the commandments of Allah Azza wa Jal? He doesn't see any ability in any one of them to lead that generation. وَإِنِّي خِفْتُ الْمَوَالِيَ مِنْ وَرَائِي And on top of this, وَكَانَتِ امْرَأَةِ عَاقِرَةِ and my wife is barren. She can't hold a child in her womb. She can't do that. وَكَانَتِ امْرَأَةِ عَاقِرَةِ وَقَدْ بَلَغْتُ مِنَ الْكِبَرِ عِتِيَّةِ And I have reached old age. So he's saying, my Lord, my situation is impossible. She cannot be pregnant. And I'm really old. And it seems to be impossible in our case that we'll ever have a child. So then he says, فَهَبْلِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيَّ So my Lord, grant me, gift me, especially from you. I know the situation is impossible, but I'm asking for an incredible gift from you. هَبْلِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيَّ Gift me a successor. هَبْلِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيَّ يَرِثُنِي وَيَرِثُ مِنْ آلِ يَعْقُوبِ That inherits me, not my money, he inherits my skills, my leadership, my knowledge. And he inherits from the family of Ya'qub, not from the whole family of Ya'qub, because of some of them, there's no goodness to inherit from them. But from the family of Ya'qub, there were good elements and aspects. And Lord, make him one who is content and one that is pleasing to you. Make him content. Have you ever made this dua for your children? Asking Allah Azza wa Jal to make them content and ones that are pleased with whatever Allah Azza wa Jal gives them because that's an important quality in leaders. If a leader is content and pleased, then this will have an effect on those that are underneath him. They'll become pleased and content with what Allah Azza wa Jal has given them. He made this dua to Allah Azza wa Jal. يَرِثُنِي وَيَرِثُ مِنْ آلِ يَعْقُوبُ وَجْعَلْهُ رَبِّ رَضِيَّ But the important thing to notice and to learn here is that when he asked what he wanted from Allah Azza wa Jal, he actually told Allah why he is asking him for this gift. He expressed his intention for why he wanted what he's asking from Allah Azza wa Jal. And so we're learning that from the etiquette of dua is that when you ask Allah for something, say, say out to Allah Azza wa Jal, why do you want this? You're asking Allah Azza wa Jal for a house, for a car, for a righteous spouse. Say, oh Allah, grant me a righteous spouse so that he or she can help me in my deen and so that we can grow closer towards you. Say, say these matters. This is a conversation. A dua is a conversation. You're conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is very important. These are matters that we learn from the story of Zakaria alayhi salam. We ask Allah azza wa jal to instill within us the love of him subhanahu wa ta'ala and to grant us the ability that we continue to make dua to him innahu wa liyu dhalika wa qadiru alayh wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in